Hey folks, Alan Saunders joined once again by Nick Fairbaugh for another episode of Draft Talk on Pittsburgh Sports Live. We're talking about the NFL draft and the Steelers prospects every day this April uh, leading up to the draft. And of course, uh, this and all the rest of our coverage can be found at SteelersNow.com. Today, Nick and I are going to talk about the Steelers trading back in the draft out of that number 25 pick yesterday. We talked about them possibly moving up to get a player like Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields. But as part of that discussion, we kind of mentioned that uh, the Steelers have a lot of needs. And when you have a lot of needs, it's generally a good idea to maximize the number of draft picks. The Steelers have, I believe, just eight in this draft and certainly could use a couple more given the number of needs I've broken down for the team uh, in a three-part piece last week at SteelersNow.com. So, Nick, in general, do you feel like trading back is a more realistic option than the Steelers trading up in this draft? Oh, no question about it. Now, they haven't done either a lot over Kevin Colbert's career. They usually stand pat. But trading back when you have th this many needs, especially when you are entering, we kind of talk about this is kind of a transitional year between, well, they want to win now, but they're also on the cusp of a retooling or a rebuild, um, especially when you're entering that period where you are going to be retooling a lot trading back seems to be really smart just to get more assets they don't all have to come this year so maybe you can get more in 2022 if you want that um at at times so you know there, there's a lot of value i think in trading back especially when you kind of look we'll talk about this kind of look at the board and who might be there at 24 i think the value might be better if you trade back uh than if you just stood at 24 so with a lot of needs, I definitely think trading back is a pertinent option for the Steelers. Yeah, now, I mean, obviously, we've talked about some of the Steelers' needs. We've talked about center, running back, tackle, cornerback, linebacker, edge rusher. You know, those seem to be the places where uh, they're thinking about using their first-round pick anyway. Um, is there a scenario – that you think the trade back is the most likely or, or maybe the most advantageous for the Steelers. Now, most likely is probably when Najee Harris is off the board, JOK is off the board. And then especially, especially if ETN's also gone out of those three, if all three of those guys are gone, I have a hard time seeing them sick at 24. I, I don't even know who they would pick after that. Maybe Asante Samuel jr. But you could feel like they could trade back and perhaps get him. Um, if they trade it back. So that I think that's a, definitely a scenario. If they want to center, I think definitely. If they want to center with their first pick, I think they'd move back. Because, um, I listen, they, the, the center they've shown the most interest in isn't Creed Humphrey, who might be the, the one guy that goes around one. It's actually Landon Dickerson or Quinn Miners. So that, that's a guy, you know, with Dickerson, with his injuries, you can trade probably into the second round and get him um, just fine. Um, but also, I just think it's most advantageous. I think if they want a running back really bad, which they're signaling they do, I think they could trade back. Even with Najee Harris, I think they could trade back. There's just not a lot of teams there at the end of round one that's going to take a running back. Because the with Giovanni Bernard now going to Tampa Bay, I think that takes them out of the equation probably for a first-round running back. I think they're going to go with, like, Edge or, or something else like that for a future need. Uh, maybe the one team that you have to worry about are the Bills, but the Bills have bigger fish to fry both on the D line and on the offensive line. I think uh, they could also use a tight end. So, I mean, the, the cornerback as well there for the Bills. I think they have bigger fish to fry than a running back. So if you trade back perhaps into one of those slots, if, if there's a team that wants to come up now, that obviously team has to be willing to do it. Obviously you have to have a two to tango. But if there's a team there at the back end of round one, I think the Steelers should absolutely consider that and trade back and then get the running back. I think the thing that is really interesting about trade back to me is that I think the Steelers can get any of the picks that they're looking at at 24, 10 to 15 picks back, any of the positions they're looking at at 24, 10 to 15 picks back with nearly as much quality with maybe the exceptional linebacker. I don't think you're going to get a player like, JOK able to fall to them if they go any farther than 24. Um, I think they might miss on Zayvon Collins if they go too much farther down than, than maybe 28 or 29. But, um, at, you know, we're talking about running back. 
I don't think there's a big difference between Harris and ETN. I don't think there's a huge difference between ETN and Javante Williams. And I think they'll certainly get one of those players, one of those three players, even if they move all the way back into the middle of the second round. I think the same thing can be said for Creed Humphrey and Landon Dickerson at center. I think there are a lot of good tackles in this draft that don't have a ton of separation after those first three. Like I think Tevin Jenkins is probably there as a, as a really quality pick at 24, but I don't think it's, it's some kind of slam dunk that he's going to be better than a, a Dylan Raddins, who's definitely going to be there probably all the way into the fifties. And so I, I think that the, the fact that they have multiple needs and the fact that it doesn't seem like they're going to be reaching for, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a player in, in those needs. That's, that's like aspirational at 24, that this is going to fall into their lap. And they're like, yes, maybe a Christian Derrissaw at tackle. But, but after that, I think they're pretty happy with any of those guys. And so when you have that many players that they'd be happy with taking a 24, it seems like a real, no brainer to move down the board. Now, the big thing is they need somebody to want to move up, especially if you're not talking about a big number of picks. Where's the impetus for a, a team like Cleveland to move up two spots or a team like Tampa to move up eight spots? Does a player have to fall unnaturally, or do we see if the draft goes pretty much the way we think things are going? Do we see a lot of teams that are going to be stacked up to get to where the Steelers are at 24? That's a question, you know, that's an interesting question because, I mean, the Chiefs are the team that strike me as the team that would move up for a tackle probably, right? I mean, they need to protect Mahomes, and they don't have a ton of needs elsewhere. So that's a team that could theoretically move up, outbid most people, most teams, and – you know, it would be okay. But then, again, they're, you know, they they need to get up to probably get a tackle they want, too. If they want a Jenkins or, or a Cosme, um, even, even a Leatherwood, perhaps, at that point. Because, again, the, 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 the Bills are there. The Packers certainly are a threat to take a tackle at 29. So there are threats to take a tackle before the Chiefs at 31. But, I mean, you would kind of look at, in my opinion – the Steelers would probably be trading back into the second round. I, I, I feel like you would have – I think you would have a team coming up from the top of the second, either to get O-line help. Uh, we've see, Maybe if one of the quarterbacks falls, I think that's kind of the thing. That's, I don't think we expect Mac Jones to fall to 24, but if he does, I think that's probably the best scenario for them. Um, to trade back, you can get a team to come up from the second round and – probably get a pretty good haul for that. Um, but if you kind of look at, at how it would fall, I mean, if a guy falls enough and it's not at, you know, receiver, quarterback, and there's not enough safety, maybe Barmore, I guess, if a team wants to come up for Barmore, but that feels a little rich to me too. The Steelers might just take the guy that's falling. That's kind of how I feel. So if, if – I'm not sure. I think the trade back scenario would almost be a team has to fall in love with someone that might not be thought of as highly in the media, you know, like, like a team, maybe in that early second round, maybe the Bengals, they get chase in at five and then they really like Tevin Jenkins and they want to get him and he's there at 24 um, or the, the Panthers pick, I don't know, Sertan. And then they really want Jenkins, something like that. I think it could be a, a good trade ship. Um, for the Steelers, but it, it's it's kind of tough to to I guess forecast it out because again, it doesn't feel like there's going to be a slam dunk player there that a team's going to want to trade up for. Some team's going to have to really fall in love with someone to come up with them. Yeah, I agree, and I think the positions that you generally look at at the end of the first round where you get good value, um, and and there are usually players uh, like that available are are kind of like corner maybe inside linebacker uh, and the Steelers have needs there. You know, if JC Horn falls down the board, if JOK falls down the board, I'd expect the Steelers to stay at 24 and take them. Um, it, it would have to be, like you said, defensive tackle, um, quarterback, safety. I mean, 
even edge rusher, I, I don't know if 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 one of the top edge rushers is there at 24. I think we get to see the Steelers go that way. They've talked to a bunch of them. I think they they see that as a bigger need than than most of the fan base does, than most people are talking about. So I wouldn't totally rule that out either. I, I think there are very few positions. I mean, at tight end, if if Kyle Pitts is there at 24, they're going to take him. I don't know about anybody else, but um they have so many needs that I think while trading back makes a lot of sense because they have so many needs. There's also this weird dynamic where they kind of probably also need the player that somebody else would be trading up to get. Yeah. I think that's exactly why, again, that's why I kind of agree with you. And and that's why I say, I think if the Steelers trade back, it's not going to be because a player falls. I think it's going to be because a team falls in love with the player and they really want that guy. And the Steelers don't really love that guy. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to be a, a, a team dichotomy here where that team's going to have to love this guy. Like the Browns did with Ninjoku a few years back, trading up for him or, or with Jabro Peppers a few years back. And guy- maybe the Steelers don't like Tevin Jenkins. They didn't go to his pro day. He seems like um, if they're going to take a tackle, the, the best – probably the best one that will be available at number 24. So maybe they don't like him. And so maybe they'll move back and take an Alex Leatherwood and another 10 picks or something like that. Um, I, I see that as a possibility. The last thing I kind of want to touch on about trading back is what do you get out of it? You know, there's the, of course, there's the draft chart uh, where the picks are assigned a numerical value. And we can look at that just for example, if the Steelers were to trade back to where the chiefs pick at 31, that should in theory, get them about 140 points, which would generally uh, translate into a late third round pick. So not a not some kind of huge haul, uh, but certainly a valuable player. If they move back, say, two picks to Cleveland, if the Browns want to come up and make sure they get an edge rusher, that gets them 40 points, which is a late fourth round pick. So again, not hugely impactful, but certainly worth doing, especially if they're only moving down a couple of spots, I think that's actually an underrated move. I don't know how well the Steelers and the Browns front offices get along, but um, Cleveland does have a different set of needs than the Steelers do. And two picks is a very easy um, move back to yeah. make. Nick, anything else on, on this topic here? I feel like we've covered it and all the other trade scenarios pretty well over the last two days. Yeah. I mean, Listen, I think trading down just makes sense with the needs you have. It's it's a win now move while also being a future move because you again you can fill another starter spot with a late third if you trade back. I mean, yeah, that's a late third. That's going to be that's a that's a that's a fourth top one hundred pick. I mean, that's useful. So, you know, and then and then if you trade back significantly enough, you know, into like the second round with I don't know, the Chargers or or some team like that. That's really so coming up. have picked 47. Um, that would give the Steelers almost 100 points. So basically, you're still talking about a low th- late third rounder. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's a far way to move back. But you can also get 20 and 22 compensation with that, probably. You could probably get uh, the two this year, obviously, at 47. The Chargers have two third rounders. So you can take 97 or 77, whichever one they offer. And then you could probably get their 2022 fourth, which, I mean, that's useful enough, along with the comp picks that are obviously coming with the Steelers um, next year for Bud Dupree and other guys. Um, so, I mean, listen, the Steelers, it feel, they're, they're kind of in this weird space at 24 where you want to trade back, but are there going to be willing partners? Is the value going to be there? But you also don't want to reach at 24 because I, I do feel like the Steelers – and this is just based off the pro days that they've gone to. I think they can get into a very easy situation where they're reaching at 24 for someone. Because uh, because I can very well see them. At, at ETN to me, it, ETN feels like a reach to me. I, I don't think he's a first-round player. Asante Samuel Jr. is a good player, but that feels like a reach to me. The only two guys that – so does Baron Browning. He feels like a reach. Like, the only two guys that really feel super good – are JOK and Najee at least have the value of the guys that Colbert and Tomlin? Yeah, saw I mean, and I, I think Leatherwood also is pretty good value at 24 because he's a tackle, he can play guard. 
he's proven that he's he can do that. But there's just not a lot of great value guys in that pro day list that they're looking at. So yeah, I don't I know. What see, I can see two kind of options there. One is that their list is kind of picked over and it would be a reach. And the other one is I can see that, like, I can see a couple scenarios where all the players we've talked about them possibly taking are there, right? Like, yeah. you know, Harris and ETN are there and both centers are there and Jenkins and, you know, Mayfield and Eichenberg and Leatherwood are all there. And, and so then if you're sitting there like, oh, okay, well, there's uh, Zayvon Collins is there. And, you know, okay, well, if you're sitting there and saying, well, there's eight guys that, the Steelers might take with their first round pick all available when their turn comes up. Why not move down at least a half a dozen spots? If you can, you'll still be guaranteed to get at least one of them. I think that's also a very good trade down possibility, but again, it, it requires somebody to really want one of those guys more than the rest and to move up to get them. I think that's the big hiccup for the Steelers trading down is finding a partner that really wants to come up. We'll see if they're able to. Also, as you mentioned at the very beginning, trading down, not really a historical move that Kevin Colbert makes very often, if at all. Yeah, I think the last time he did it, he, 2002, I want to say, they picked Casey Hampton in that draft. Um, so very long time ago. He doesn't do it very often, period. And, I mean, like he doesn't move down the board a lot, even in the mid-rounds, very, very seldomly. So, this is not something we've seen, but listen, we've seen a lot of firsts and a lot of trend breaking recently from Kevin Colbert and company. So a trade down would certainly follow that trend. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, I think it might be a smart move if they can find um, the right trade partner. Uh, that's all we've got on this topic. We'll be back tomorrow with more. Uh, we're talking every weekday during the month of April leading up to the 2021 NFL draft. And of course, we've got lots more coverage at SteelersNow.com. And uh, check out the rest of the shows here at Pittsburgh Sports Live. I know the mic'd up guys talking about the James Conner situation and uh, all kinds of stuff. So uh, give a poke around there, press subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. So when you, you know when the latest show publishes, and uh, we'll be back with more tomorrow on Draft Talk. I'm Alan Saunders. That's Nick Faribaugh. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.